what's happening. Be easy, bro. Be easy. Be easy, bro. Be easy, bro. Mike speaking to the mic. Look, we all fit, see? We do fit. Sit. With the dog, he's got to sit, though. Can you sit? That's our good boy. <laughs> high five. If you're on IG Live or Facebook Live, you saw Jax give me a high five. My day is made. He's about to get down, though, so you need to give him a path. Because he will bail at some point. Jax is making out with Joel right now. So he's not able to view us. Today's Black Wolf ASMR. The sounds of Jax licking my face. Ooh. Bye, Jax. So before we do introductions, just as a pre-show... Hey, Adriana, do you know what ASMR is? Hmm. She does not. I feel like a loser because I don't. I wouldn't say you're a loser for not knowing Definitely that. don't feel like a loser. Yeah, Joel, explain to her a little bit. You're not missing out on much. Actually, you're missing out on a lot, actually. Never mind, now that I think about it. So, ASMR is basically this way of a... It's a basically therapeutic noises, if you will. So, like, for instance, chewing on Cheetos. Or maybe, like, you'd be like... Listen to me, step on, step on my cold brew. And you have to whisper to me. You have to be real silent. And it's like... The taste is delicious. Like stuff like that, yes. Okay. Or maybe... The sound of my cigar. And it's real soothing to some individuals. And there are people that have massive followings based off of stuff like this. They do. On Instagram? Instagram, YouTube, YouTube. you name it. Nachos. Listen to me, eat these nachos. Crunch. Yes. Wow, crunch, crunch, what a business. Mm -hmm. If you could think it, you could do it. If you could dream, you could do it. But if you're dreaming, I'm thinking, ain't I? Ah. <laughs> oh, great, now I've turned all the audio up so I can't actually hold the mic. All right, everybody, so happy Friday. It is definitely picking you up, my goodness. CNT episode 34, 34 maybe? 34, 34. Good okay. number. Um, good enough. Thirty-four of these. Thirty-four weeks in a row now. Thirty-four weeks in a row. Yes, yes. No misses. No misses. I was even sick one time. We did a thirty-second podcast. <laughs> thirty-second update. You got to get it in, no matter what, folks. Yeah. And that was thanks to Joel, because I was like, "We're not doing it, Joel," and he's like, "We got to do something." Consistency. But then he didn't even know like how bad it was, so he kept asking me questions. I was like, "No, yes, no, yes, <laughs> it's no." Really funny. And then so it's not our not our best episode. No. Certainly not Short. our most downloaded. Short. Um. Short. But. Update. Happy Friday. So this is the week of Christmas. If you happen to listen to this later on, um, Christmas was on Tuesday. Goodness. And uh, so that means we had a lot this week. We had a lot going on. Lot. Right now, we are joined by the amazing Adriana mm. Morell. Hi, y'all. Here from Denver, Colorado. Okay. And uh, this kind of is, 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 she's here because of winter break. Uh, her husband, Avery, and her have, have driven down with the dogs. And we'll chat about how much fun that is. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they were in town for the week, uh, and this coincides with us celebrating our four-year anniversary. So on December 15th, Janai Hamilton got that right last, last week. Mm -hmm. The trivia was, uh, when when did we run our first class at Black Wolf? And the answer was, are you trying to get back up? There's the ball under the couch. Well, you're, there's, there's, it's probably there's quite a few balls under the couch. It's probably going to be couch. tough to get. I'm going to let you all figure that one out. Um, we opened our classes on Monday, December 15th. 2014 and the reason this coincides uh, or, or is special is because adriana was one of the athletes that was there on day one we did slam balls and burpees that's it without Delicious. a rig mm -hmm. without floors yeah we we're in the corner of that awful building <laughs> um and so here from the beginning and and we'll we'll touch on that i wanted to talk today a little bit about kind of where we came from don't worry about it he's fine we just tell him to go lay down where we came from, kind of where we started, how it's evolved. Yeah, we certainly weren't in the facility we're in now. Uh, you know, Joel joined us in 2016. Summer 2016. Um, Adriana left us in summer of 2016. But I always come back. Like two ships passing in the night. <laughs> um, which, I mean, thank God that Joel showed up when he did because Adriana leaving was, was pretty heartbreaking. And I uh, still haven't recovered. Still haven't recovered. <laughs> Mainly because hiring coaches is the worst and so if she had just stayed, we, uh, we'd be sitting pretty. But, uh, I mean, we're still so pretty. We're still sitting pretty. Still but, sitting uh, pretty. So thankfully, because of Joel's commitment to the team and ability to, to deal with me. So we'll, we'll talk about all of that stuff. I have our January yoga, I mean, a uh, bingo board. Um, I'm gonna, they haven't seen it yet, so I was going to, y'all can take a copy. Um, oh, I want to get their, their thoughts on that. Uh, Matty Garcia and I were working on it last night. And so I want to see, this is what we'll be running with y'all in January. And then 
some other general shenanigans. Maybe going back to the uh, Joel Cardenas ASMR nice. minute. Um, maybe we'll let uh, we'll God, we'll record nice. Adriana sipping on her almond milk latte. Almond milk I'm sure latte. we get a great following on YouTube. Make a noise. For that. Um, It'd be a good sound tearing paper. This this week, so it's the week of Christmas. We got New Year's next week. In terms of announcements, not a lot going on. We had the happy hour last night. Thank you so much mm-hmm. to everybody who came out to Pinkerton's. That was nice. Food, amazing as always. As always. As always. We had a great turnout. And we have a photo on Instagram. Like you said, it's about half the people. Half the people. It's kind of, we're there for two and a half hours and basically had a first shift and a second shift. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we had a great time there. But in terms of looking ahead, really the only thing to talk about is that New Year's schedule, we're going to be regular schedule Monday on Tuesday, we decided this last night, and maybe this will get Adrian and Avery to stay for a couple days. <laughs> yeah, it's on Tuesday, nice. New Year's Day, we're going to do Chad. So Chad oh, wow. is the hero wad yeah. we just saw promoted by pretty much the entire CrossFit community. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a hero wad, and uh, in, in um, the honor of a fallen service member, we are going to be doing 1,000 step-ups for time, Waited. if you're able, with a load. And so whether that's a vest or a bag, and that'll be the easy one. Bring your own bag. Um, we're just going to throw some uh, sand balls or slam balls or, you know, whatever we can, dumbbells, whatever you need in there. I believe the load's 35, 25. I'm not certain about that. Yeah, you want to be able to wear this, folks. You and don't want to have to hold it. You're not holding it. I, no, I'm just no. not even going to allow hold it. You cannot no. hold it. it. I don't. You're looking at literally an hour of step-ups. Oh, goodness. Probably longer. Okay. Just um, you in the box. Goodness. And we will have scales. We will have, you know, half chad, just like Murph. Yeah. Half chad, quarter chad, whatever you need to do. Uh, one, I don't know. We'll come up with a couple different variations. But that'll be Tuesday. And so that means that our schedule, and this is what I want to kind of bounce around right now. So do people still, and think of our people, not just people. I know there are people. Do people still party on New Year's Eve? Oh, yeah. For Certainly. Sure. For sure. So... My 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 neighborhood's a straight up concert. Okay, I I, I mean more like you. our people. Like our do I need to be planning on our people being like hammered drunk at midnight, and so they're not getting up for an eight a.m. Or should we say we have some people that like to have a little bit of fun? I imagine no one's going to bed super early on Christmas Eve on New Year's Eve. I am. I haven't seen New Year's since I was like twenty four. There's no. You know what happens at midnight? Nothing. <laughs> you know what happens at midnight? Absolutely nothing except you losing an opportunity to sleep. <laughs> so why are you staying up? You might be something. Though. Why are you staying up? Um, so we'll run classes probably at every hour and a half. And uh, oh, so that means 8 and 9.30. And you know what? It could possibly, you could possibly have already missed New Year's. You know what I mean? Because New Year's is, the New Year's at the same time. Global, Jackson, go lay down. But it's celebrated on go everyone else's lay down. clock. So I wonder what time the actual New Year New Year is. That's well, I mean, time is a con- construct. So <laughs> it's not as if it's real anyways. So oh, we're man. celebrating bullshit no matter what. Um, I mean, who's to say what a New Year is? It just helps you organize your day a bit. There you go. And Jax, go lay down. The what? And build community, and build community with your friends. Yeah. Celebrate another year together. Yeah. Sure. Maybe the so timing it of it is a little. Couldn't you have a New Year's celebration at noon on New Year's Day? Certainly. Like, hey, guys, we made it to a New Year. I suppose. Why do you have to lose sleep mm-hmm. to well, watch technically... Carson Daly ring in the New Year on MTV? <laughs> Does he still do that? I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> I remember the first time I actually watched the ball fall in Times Square, and it didn't fall. It just went slowly down the pole. Oh, you expected it to to explode? Well, you guys made it to be such a big thing. We're going to watch the ball fall. It doesn't fall. No, it glides. It doesn't even glide. It kind of (laughs) low. New Year in Paris looks pretty cool. Like carefully low. Fireworks off the Eiffel Tower. Sure. Or Sydney, Australia does an incredible show, apparently. Oh, I mean, look, Disney oh, World does an up. incredible show. Doesn't mean I'm staying up for it. So you wouldn't stay up for that? No. Um, Not even for Mickey. Stop. Stop. Yeah, Minnie. Do it for Mickey. And Minnie. So New Year's Day, we will have class go. eight eight a.m. and nine thirty a.m. We'll be taking on Chad. Thousand step ups for time with load. That's really the only announcement for the week. Um, Got the chills. Looking ahead. And this brings us to the the bingo. In January, we're going to be doing a few things, rolling a few things out. And one thing is going to be this bingo game. So 
It's a month-long game of bingo, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and release this. I'm going to edit it, and that's why they have it, so we can make changes. But I have a, this rough draft. I'll go ahead and put a picture of the rough draft up on Instagram today. I'll have Joel do that, um, just so y'all can have an idea of kind of what we're getting into. A rough, a rough draft. But, um, post a rough draft, right? What? Do you like to post the rough yeah, draft? Yeah, just so they can see it. as we, And yeah, then yeah. I reserve the right to edit it if mm -hmm. I so choose before January 1st. Yeah. But folks. basically, you have one of these cards. I'll get some card stock, um, cut them down so you can have it with you, keep it in your bag or whatever. And then every time you get one of these, the coach that's present at the time will, will, will sign, sign off. off on it. And then what we'll do is we'll have uh, awards for – reward – reward? Award. Rewards because reward. you earned it. Rewards, rewards yeah. for bingo, which is like a straight line. We'll do uh, – We'll come up with, like, if you get a square, um, and then if you do blackout, I think it's either going to be, like, half off the membership, maybe a free month, or maybe into a drawing for a free three months. I haven't figured that out. Um, but just something fun like that. And so, why don't y'all go, like, just don't, well, we're not going to read them all. Okay. But kind of pick your favorites and say them out loud so we can, they can see what, what we're discussing here. Work out at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. So, the reason I did that one is because there's so many people sorry there's so many people that say throughout the year i wish i could get to the 5 a.m class and so now this gives you the chance gives you a reason uh to come to that 5 a.m and see if that life's for you so i figured that would actually help people who have needed a little extra push for that i like to take a selfie with the coach that's i knew that'll make you feel awkward That'll make Ben feel awkward. Take so take so no. It should be take a selfie with Ben. My guess is you're gonna get seventy percent of the selfies. No, it should be take a selfie with Ben. That should not be it. Take a selfie with Ben. Do not take it's a selfie it, with Ben. Is what it really. I should says. have said Joel. To be specific, <laughs> I assumed y'all would have known that. Attend a seminar at Black Wolf. Can you give me an example? So in January we're gonna have Jordan Weechers back, and I'm gonna do a oh, nutrition right. seminar. Oh okay. I don't think we'll get Katie Brazil, although I was trying. Um, so we'll at least That's have two cool. opportunities for that. Got it. Who else? Show off your recovery practice. So that one I thought would I like be that. you have like if you have to go get a massage, you go to oh. yoga, you go to mm -hmm. Pilates, something mm -hmm. like that, and then you either you check in, you do. There's got to be evidence of it, so either check. It's got to be some sort of check in. I also have drop in at another cross affiliate, yeah, like and that. on these, what's going to happen is either on the back or posts on a blog. I'm going to post kind of the explanation for each square. So for the show your recovery practice and drop in another CrossFit gym. Show off your recovery practices, social media posts where you're either sharing the masseuse you went to, the yoga studio you went to, or if it's just like a walk in the park, what you did. Drop it into the CrossFit gym. That requires you to check in while you're there and say something nice about it. Yes. So, um, I try, love that. Try not to bullshit too much. Or, or, no, or say something nice about it. Only nice, only nice things. Only nice things. Only, only nice, nice things, things. folks. Because if it's not nice things, then it looks like I'm trying to get you to go there to talk shit. And I don't want that. Certainly. <laughs> Building the honey empire. Um, so, those are those are two kind of similar in that um, the recovery is really basically on this. I want you to take in the principles that we learned through CrossFit, and so that's why the bottom right record your food and my fitness pal for seven consecutive days. Okay, the reason I want you to do that is because foundation is nutrition. Mm -hmm. All right, it doesn't say you have to eat healthy; it just says you have to record. Because I think documenting, even if you're eating Chick Fil A every day, documenting still helps you get back on the path. Yes, mm -hmm. this isn't about macros; it's about anything that specific. But if I'm just writing my food down, even if I'm not adhering to some specific nutrition approach, it still helps me make better choices. Mm -hmm. The recovery practice, dropping another affiliate, that kind of plays along with, one, we need you to do, be doing stuff outside of the gym. Um, it's close. It's the closest thing I could also come to, like regularly learn and play new sports, which I've interpreted as oh. all like take on new experiences. And so I didn't want to, I mean, if there was a way to say, hey, go join a rec league, I would have said it, but I think that'd be a, a big stretch. Yeah. So I think going to another gym is kind of like utilizing your fitness outside of this space. Same thing for dropping to a yoga studio or something like that. Mm -hmm. So just trying to, I want to reward, like le I want learned behavior rewarded. And yeah. so I want you to track your food. There, you get a prize for tracking your meals. Track I want you meals. to drop in other affiliates. I want you to go to yoga. I want you to do stuff. There, we'll give you a reward for that. Yeah, so, it was pretty fun. Yeah, I just discovered this. There you I go. I did it yesterday morning with my siblings. There it was amazing. Go. On YouTube. Hot yoga? No, it was just oh. in our playroom. Oh, okay, okay. No, the YouTube stuff is legit, too. Like, there are, like, whole months 
Like, mm-hmm. I remember uh, there was one chick that I had me and my little sister do to get her moving. Hey, let's do some yoga. You know, she did it with me. She enjoyed it. And it was a little 30 minute, nice and easy. But you've been go- going to Black Swan Yoga on Wednesday this, night. This is only my second night this week. Yeah, but it's two in a row, two, two weeks in a row. Two, so, two how's that going? What's that oh, like man, for it's you? Awesome. It's so awesome. So, my curiosity intrigued because of good old Joe Rogan always talking about it. And I was like, yeah, I need to go. I want to go. And I never went until fa- uh, Maddie finally. Uh, invited me to a nighttime deal, and I didn't know they had like nighttime classes. So at Black Swan, I don't know the rest of the week, but apparently, like every hour and a half, there's a, a class going on. So the one I've been going to is the 8:30 p.m. on Wednesday night, and it's an hour long hot yoga. And usually, when you think hot yoga, you're thinking like super hot, super super hot sauna. Like it is not like that. It's it's just toasty, and it's not uncomfortable. Like everyone's like it's it's a it's a packed class. So I'm a little afraid to invite more people because I've gotten a few people like, hey, let me know when you're going. I'm going to go too. This time we had Sivo join us. The first time we went last week, it was Cecilia, Maddie, and myself. Uh, Maddie invited me the week prior. But I was like, I don't want to go. I can't go yet. And 830 works just fine on a Wednesday night. So it's an hour long. You could rent a mat for five bucks um, or you could bring your own. Bring a towel because you get pretty sweaty. And then it's just – it's – so you're just going through poses, and like you breathe with the poses. You breathe in as you go into one pose. You breathe out as you go into another. It's pretty fluid. The lady I've had, she, the woman I've had, she's done it twice. I've had her twice, and her voice is pretty soothing. It's pretty fun, and you're just so relaxed. And it's it's different, um, different levels. So you could be either like one like extreme yogi, or you could be a complete beginner. I heard a little thud too, and um, you could do half the stuff and just lay there if you yeah. want. And I've seen people do that, or you could do the whole thing. Um, and it gets pretty freaking sweaty in there, and at the end, you almost fall asleep. Your whole body's just relaxed. You've gone through all these poses, so your body's just limber. Oh, it's it's a fun experience. Like, I come out there, and I feel like I'm just noodles. Noodles. Just noodles. My, like, my body's just noodles. Relax. How is, uh, what's the cost structure there? Like, what do you pay? Because Black so, Swan, they're known to be donation-based, but I've never talked to anybody that actually has explored what that means. They are donation-based. I think they recommend a $10 donation, yeah. but I just take a $10 bill for my $5 rental and for my donation. So I just so donate, I donate five, five bucks. Yeah, no, I do donate five bucks. So they don't have any sort of membership? Uh, so there are memberships. There are they do have, I believe they do have like a 180 unlimited classes per membership. Month. Yeah, per month thing. It's somewhere along the lines of 150, 180. It's not uh, cheap. Next time, take fifteen dollars because you don't get to be cheap if you're in the fitness industry too. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bam, bro. No, they're in business just like we are. Broke ass Mexican. Pay the full price. We don't appreciate when work, people work out for free here. It's not so for we, free. We don't want to be hypocrites. If someone brought five bucks in and said, "I think this is what your time's worth." You would be pissed. <laughs> you well, would it's be definitely pissed. not a small class, so. It's definitely. Isn't it connected to Juice Land? It is. They're right next to each other, and uh, I get. I bought my sister a juice there, because she was hanging out. Because I have to take with me, and my mom picks it up when she gets out of work, and that works out just fine. And she does not mind green apple juice, so it was apple juice with cucumbers and celery, and like yeah. all this green stuff. I thought it was just straight up apple juice when I bought it, because everything had settled. I shook it up. I was like, "Uh oh, she might not like this." Turns out Adrian likes healthy drinks. Ooh. So that was fun. I was like, "Yeah, she liked it," because I tasted it. And I was like, "Oh no, she's not gonna." like it and she drank it so there you go adrian likes apple juice with greens in it good to know it is definitely a fun time i recommend anyone trying hot yoga it is not as hot as you think it is you're not sweating bullets you're not gonna faint it is fun and they do have a 10 o'clock and that is a smaller class 10 p.m 10 p.m yeah yeah they're going pretty much all day but those are the only classes i would go to 8.30 is perfect. It's right after coaching. Just yeah. let loose. That's the most I've ever sweated in my life, hot yoga. It's so, you get super sweaty. Like, just drenched. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone is just drenched. And I would recommend you buy your own mat. Yeah. Their mats are nice and sticky, but they were used previously before that class. So it's like, mm, I see a sweat imprint on this. Mm. But they, they do wipe them down. They give them a quick spray spray. No, sure. Wipe down. No, but still. <laughs> still, that's someone's back. Oh my. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's a it's a real good time, real good time. And again, all levels. Yeah. You don't have to do whatever they're telling you to. You can do your own thing, kind of, sort of. Just. 
So you're talking like you do we hear a lot of people that are that are hesitant to do yoga? Cuz you're well, you're talking like you you've talked to people that don't want to go cuz it's too hot or something like that. Yeah, I feel like the the hot yoga thing like there's a little bit of like hesitation to go because they're thinking oh it's way too hot and then with yoga like they don't know what to expect from yoga. Yeah. They don't know what's going on. The hardest thing I've ever done is the yo- the warrior pose. And that's just because you're just in like in a Balancing. soft mud. You're just holding it. And you're just balanced. So it's a good burn. Um, this past Wednesday, actually, we're, we did a lot of plank, a lot of plank uh, related poses, and that was the hardest thing. But other than that, like she would let us know you could drop the knees if you need to. If there's, if you need to take a break, take a break. Like again, the girl's really good. Like she is, her voice is real soothing. I'm just like you're just, you're just along for the ride. But I feel like. That's why I didn't do hot yoga. One, I didn't know where to go. But two, I thought, like, oh, it's, I'm going to be sweating bullets. I'm going to die. It's an hour long. What? That hour goes by pretty quick. You are just entertained the whole time. And I like not knowing what's going on. I like not knowing what's next. I like having to be surprised. But like, all right, now you're going to do this. Oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. Make sure you're being ready doing this. So I'm a big fan of going in and not knowing what's going to happen. Did you feel coached? Um, no, it's not. It's not really coach. I have to look around and like to see what the poses are. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because again, she's speaking in a little bit of yogi terminology, but it's not like super, super. It's super, super like yogi terminology. Just some things I don't know the names of the poses yet. And so far, they've all been simple poses. And there are apparently advanced classes. So, yeah. and this is just this is just fine for me. Like I'm, I'm shaking. I'm sweating. I'm like, okay, is she gonna make a switch of pose or not? Um, but it's it's a good time. Definitely recommend it to everybody. It is fun to experience at least once. You feel so relaxed afterwards. That car ride home, relaxed. Well, good. So speaking of yoga and f- trendy fitness, <laughs> Adriana lives in Denver now. I do. And uh, Denver the is the fitness. mecca of trendy fitness. Um, is it in, really? in, in good oh. ways and bad ways. Um, I suppose not bad ways. Maybe no. ineffective ways. <laughs> Less effective ways. I would feel like California would be the place for trendy fitness. You know, they got the weather and everything, so they're doing all the things. Sure, but my, I think Denver has is is collecting because all it's of growing them. so much. Because one, everybody's moving from California now, <laughs> and where are they going to end up? Austin or Denver? Yes. And so all of your best minds from California are ending up in Denver, and so that's where the trends are are, are culminating or, or accumulating. Who I should you, say. Who are you saying just moved to Austin now? Uh, Tim oh, Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss lives that's, there now. That's crazy. Where did yeah. he move from? California? That San Francisco. Know. Wow. Yeah. And that's a pricey place, right? Yeah, it's a very pricey place. But um, so in Denver, yes. and and we, and uh, we've spoken about my friend Amy Shank that lives there, yes. um, works at Awaken, and some mm-hmm. just some different stuff that goes on there. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, what's life like in Denver? Let's let's. I know we could talk the full breadth of like. Avery's job and where you work and <laughs> commute, but let's focus on um, Denver as a fitness yeah. mecca. How it compares to Houston as well and whatnot. You have all that outdoor space, um, you know, outdoor trails, things like that. Even just being inside the city, it feels different yeah. than being in Houston because it feels more natural uh, than Houston does. Yeah. Um, so what what is life like there as a as an athlete as a as a fitness enthusiast as a fitness enthusiast so i think the two main things that stick out to me as like relative to houston is the mountains obviously or are the mountains i guess um and their draw out there and all the different sports you can do year round there and relative to houston where here like cars rule everything mm-hmm. yeah. and like not having sidewalks here is normal yeah. and not seeing pedestrians here ever is normal and like if you do see a pedestrian like car has right of way right in denver that yeah, is absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. in denver pedestrians no matter what have the right of way have right of way that's crazy that's cool. and like it, it's great yeah. um are there scooters here not yet that that trend has not made it <laughs> so joel i'm not sure you know but there are will. there so like how we have pay bikes yeah, they have scooters. They I've have seen pay them. scooters they now. They can just stop wherever they want. Wherever. And just leave it. Yeah. That's interesting. So people, especially... That's weird. I don't... I can't <laughs> fathom that yet. No, I don't... No, not down here. No I way. can't see Someone's that. Someone's going to get a rock thrown at them. For I can't that. see that working here. Someone's going to throw their 64 ounce from from the gas station at them as they run. It does... Them. I mean, not to... I mean, 
not not to make this socially conscious, but it seems like a very white thing to do <laughs> to have scooters and then leave scooters in the scooter. middle of the street. In like, the, like that's a white thing to do. Like that's <laughs> no one's gonna take this. That's a white thing to do to just think that I can leave this shit wherever I want to leave it. How's that? How's scooter life in? Did you have a scooter? I have never. I've ridden never one. had a scooter. No. I've had one. Did you ever have a scooter before? Oh yeah, like a razor scooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> razor. There you go. Did you pop the willies? <laughs> You, know, you like try to pop Lily. Look at me, guys. Lily. I certainly had a Razor scooter, but these are motorized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, people love them. They use them to like get to work. Like that is their form of transportation. If I was in Denver, I would use it. Yeah, for sure. I would not use it down here. <laughs> like everywhere, we have Lime, we have Bird, we have the. Are Uber. they on the street or are they on the sidewalk? They're on the sidewalk. Okay. And Indeed. they have the same. The way that I understand it, they have the same rules as bikes. But okay. bikes go on the street, don't they? They do, but they have a lane. Like they, like they, they're going down the sidewalk, and you're walking. They go, they scoot right by you. Okay. Some people, I'm sure, some people run right into you. Oh, for sure, for sure. And that's probably one of the complaints. Um, so they're alive and well. Interesting. People, like all you, you'll see people just riding down. How big is Denver compared to Houston? Tiny. Okay. Like mm-hmm. uh. Like inside the loop, inside the Beltway. Oh, f- oof. Um. In, in between those two loops. Okay. Wow, it's small. So I live 15 minutes northwest of downtown. Yeah. And that is only, it's less than 10 miles. So 15 minutes here would get you just outside 610. It gets me to my home. Because it's 25 miles to Eldridge. And that's where my parents live. Yeah, less, from downtown. probably around there. And um, we can, and that's well within Houston. Mm-hmm. Right. You would consider Eldridge and I tend to be well yeah. within Houston. Um. And I think Denver feels so much smaller because the laws in terms of building and not blocking the mountain views, yeah. there are no skyscrapers. That's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. So, like, nothing can block the mountain view. I mean, I'm not anti-sky. We have no reason <laughs> to block. Like, build it high here. That's fine. Yeah, but it's flat. It's really cool that somewhere where you can take in that beauty, yeah. they're try- they're ma- do- making an effort. They're trying to preserve it. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. And in terms of fitness, which I think is interesting, is that anything in the city is also competing with the mountains. Because so people- that's so that's what I heard. I, I when when XPT came to town, and I talked about that on the podcast, and that's kind of where I started talking about about Amy, about awake and all these things. XPT, we're talking about breath work and then contrast therapy with heat and ice. Um, there was a few men and women talking about kind of life in Colorado, mm-hmm. and and they said. It was kind of, look, every business, the owner, I assure you, has a thing where he or she is like, well, you don't understand what I'm up against. Right, right. And in Denver, allegedly, the reason you can't grow your membership is because the mountains steal your members. Okay? That's a tough sell for me. But I get the premise. The premise is that maybe I don't need an unlimited membership to the CrossFit affiliate because at least when the weather's good, three days a week, I plan on being on the mountain. And it is a full body workout. No matter the time of year. Even if I'm hiking, I'm biking, I'm skiing, snowboarding. Well, yeah, no matter the time of year, there is a, there is a full body activity. Correct. That I can be out there. And I'm going to be out there for a couple hours. Correct. Because one, to get out there, it's got to be worth a couple hours. Like I'm not going to drive all the way out there, get up the mountain, and then be like, oh, 20 minutes, and then go home. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a full body workout for probably two or three hours. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not going to have time for the gym realistically, but also energy for the gym. Even mm-hmm. if I had time. I'm not going to have that physical energy or need. So I get the premise. Um, what is the cost of living like in Denver? Very high. Or relative to here. What's a CrossFit membership right now there? Uh, 200. Okay. 200? Unlimited? For an individual-ish. Wow. That's like an estimated guess. Mm-hmm. Wow. Although, now, let me... Because we got I, gyms down here that are that much. I like to ask this, too. Do you think, like, do you, like... Are people at your gym actually paying that? Or do you think that's yes. just something they... Okay, because here, my my thought is that a lot of gyms have that on their website and, and they have no very few is, members yeah. that's actually paying that. Because the gyms that are charging... if, if I'll take you through it after this. <laughs> there's the gym. There's a gym right down the street charging $190 and there's not, I, there's not a single, single individual there paying $190 to go to that place. But uh, in Denver, I, that, that seemed more realistic. Um, okay, so cost of living is a little bit higher. A little higher. But you have a... A cleaner experience you have an outdoorsy experience um i mean are y'all going out a lot like i know avery works <laughs> good old bp and also avery being the only black man in denver 
<laughs> I mean, what, what? Let's focus on you there. So, I mean, how how often? What's realistic for? Because okay, you live places and they're like, I would go to the beach every day if I lived by the beach, right. and then you actually live there and you never go to right. the beach. Um, how often are you going to something that might be unique to Denver? So, I did not grow up doing winter sports. So in the winter, I go there maybe once, maybe twice. Okay. Um, like I haven't been to the mountains since early October. And we're now in January. So it's been a while. Yes. Quite yes. a while. Quite a while. Quite a while. Um, What's the, like how far are you from it? Like from a. From what, the mountain mountains? You being at the mountain, whatever that would entail. Uh, Do you go to a park on the mountain? Like how does that. <laughs> what? Because you can't just go to a mountain. Like oh, You can. There's no Hold on, real pause, quick pause. There's no fences? No fences. There's trails. What was I saying? Slight technical difficulty, folks. Should be fine. Cool. And we're back. Um, okay, so I live right in between downtown Denver There's no fences? Like, people don't Boulder. own the land? There's public lands. There, but you're right. But that's not, you don't consider that a park? No. I mean, I guess. Just the side of the mountain with no fences? There's certainly no fences. Okay. Certainly no fences. In Texas, it's all private land, so yeah. <laughs> there'd be fences all over that mountain. There's trails mm -hmm. everywhere. Okay. Trails everywhere. So I can get on my car, drive 20 minutes, and be in the foothills of Boulder. Okay. Nice. Actual people from Colorado would not consider that the mountains. Oh. Uh, I consider that the mountains. Gotcha. I get to go on a little trail. I see mm -hmm. some nature. I see a bunny or two. I'm good to go. We have bunnies at Memorial Park. You don't are need you, mountains. Are you worried about, like, bears or anything? Or uh, no. No. If I go to the mountains mountains, like if I want to do a 14-er, mm -hmm. um, or I want to go to a ski town, mm -hmm. that's at least two hours. Have you done a 14-er? I have. I've done two. Can you explain to us what that is? Because that's kind of the... That's what you think of. That's the mountain version of, like, half marathon sticker on the back of your Yeah, car. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like... <laughs> 14 So can you explain sure. what that entails and why it, it may or may not be not worth the hype that people may or may not inflate it to be? So I personally love them. Okay. I enjoy the experience of hiking. I enjoy like looking around. I also think they're really tough. Okay. Um, so the first one I did was beer stat, which is like known as like a good intro into the mountains because you drive most of the elevation so you start around twelve or 13,000 okay. already. So as you're driving up, you can feel the elevation. Oh, cool. My hands get really puffy. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. That's like my tail sign, like I'm in the mountains. My yeah. hands get inflated. That's cool. Um, and then it's two and a half hours up, two hours down. So what? So what's – the parameters are that the top is 14,000. 14,000-ish, yeah. Okay. Or but above. the starting point – Depending on the mountain. Negotiable. Negotiable, for sure. Okay. For sure. And then the length is also negotiable. Very negotiable. Because if I'm only going 1,000 feet, that's shorter than if I have to climb 3,000 feet. And also, there might be easy grade and, and more aggressive. 100%. But it's still, it's it's hiking, it's not climbing. Yes and no, depending on which one you do. There okay. are some where you have to climb. Okay. Like use ropes and et cetera. Gotcha. Cool. Um, beer stat, the first one I did, first hour and a half around a lake. Okay. Like, Chit chatting, people are like blasting their music, whatever. By the last like 400 meters, I was scrambling on oh, wow. rocks. Oh wow! Yeah. Is this something that people do? Yeah. But is this something people do not complete? Oh, certainly. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people will just turn around. Like regular people. Yeah. Not like terribly sedentary. I get yeah. that, but like, like if I underestimated, I might get there and be like, oh, that's not. Right, especially if you don't live at elevation. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I went right now, my cocky ass was like, I'm, this is easy. Meh. Didn't pack water. It was just like, I'm just going to walk up and walk down. Oof. Then I very well could get caught. Oh, you have no like, water? Are you crazy? Well, that's what I'm saying. If I underestimate this, this yes. is something that you easily could not complete. Yes, correct. Okay. My second that one. That was always my question was like, look, it looks like a bunch of blonde women just walking up a hill and going, a 13 and then walking down. But it's good to hear that it's actually something that's worth respecting. Oh, for sure. And it's actually tough. Especially if you're, like, doing it, quote, unquote, for time. Mm. Okay. And you're, like. Does each course have, like, do people generally have, like, PR times for courses? Or is it something where you go, okay, I've already done 
beer stat. Beer stat. I'm going to do, I did Evans, my second one. Like, would you go back and do beer stat again and try to do it faster? Or is it just like, check it off the list? I personally would check it off the list unless someone was coming to visit and they're like, I want to do a 14er. Okay. I would choose beer stat. Gotcha. Or Evans. Okay. Evans sure. was your second? My second. Okay. What's your third? Uh, I would love to do Grays and Tories in the same day. They are like, you would do Grays first or Tories and then go down and back up. They're close enough where you can do both of them in the same how day. How long would that take? The entire day. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like how early would you have to start, ideally? Ideally, you are up in the mountains. Like you've already driven your two and a half to three hours before the sun rises. Okay. Oh, wow. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Adventure. Mm -hmm. Do you come down the second one close to your car? Because that if it's too mount too, yeah, it seems like you get pulled away from yeah. your starting point. So you'd have to figure that out logistically. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just gotta go, go back. Which is kind of I kind of cheated my second one because we summited, mm -hmm. and Mount Evans is one of the ones where you can drive up to the summit. Yeah. So instead of hiking back down, Avery hitchhiked or quote unquote hitchhiked into someone's car. Gotcha. Got driven down. Drove gotcha. back up to us, so we didn't actually hike back down. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you pack for, like, food? RX bars. RX bars. RX bars, water, bananas. Okay, so simple stuff. Simple yeah, yeah. yeah. Trail mix, nice. if you're into that. Yum. I love trail mix. We did Manitou Springs, the incline. Okay. Y'all would love this. Oh, man. In one mile, you, the grade is, meters. you, the grade is... 2,000 feet? In a mile? Something like that. That's pretty aggressive. Uh, someone who actually knows the numbers sure, sure. will well, call I'll, me out. I wouldn't but... know it either, but that still seems very aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it was really aggressive. It took me a little less than an hour. Olympians will do it in like 20 minutes. That's more of a, than a foot of incline per meter. Yeah. So every three feet you go up a foot. Yeah. It, oh, it, was super, it was super steep, super fun. Holy crap. Yeah. So I mean, fun. A foot, a foot's here, so every time you go this far, you have to... That's a stair. Yeah, no, it's a staircase. Like, literal steps, and they have them numbered. You'll see 100, 200. That's cool. 300. That's cool. Oh, wow. And like then that. the trail down is about four miles, so I jogged that down Ooh, after. Okay. How long did it take you to get up? A little less than an hour, which is, like, pretty average not pace. Bad. Not bad. Yeah, not, bad. not elite by any means. Oh my! I can't imagine. That's that's the this is this is fun stuff. Like the that Red Bull four hundred meter sprint up. A oh ski yeah, 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 yeah. In like, Park Hill. I that's, mean, a, that's Park, Park City. City. That's the stuff. Like I think that looks so fascinating. Mm -hmm. It'd be so hard to train for down here. Yeah. With elevation, like what the yeah. hell would you even yeah. do? Yeah. But like, just find some stairs and just go. suffocate yourself <laughs> and find stairs. Yeah, yeah, that's all you could do. Like with hold, that mask. That hold your that. breath. I did that. I have the training mask. I took it to the LA Fitness. Got on the stair mask and just like. <laughs> This yeah, sucks. but like that stuff seems that seems fun, hard, like hard. Yes, it seems like a fun way to crush your soul. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna and crush it was beautiful, soul. and I got to jog. So this this kind of brings evidence to like legitimately, gyms are competing with the mountains because if I can go climb the stairs, and that's fun, and I can set a new PR, or I can push yep. the time, or you know, I could carry someone, take the take a friend, take a dog, whatever. I can always kind of change up mm -hmm. the stimulus. Then you are legitimately competing with. Yes and no. I've done that once. Yeah. I did that one Saturday. And like went to the gym the next day. Yeah. Interesting. But, Interesting. But people grow up I doing that. Really bad. I've been trying to hold it. It's not working. <laughs> well, fascinating. So all in all, they really represent like I'm going to use my fitness. Yeah. Outside of the gym. Like that is actually lived out. Yeah. For sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I mean, and... and... <laughs> I think that that helps with the avoidance of a sedentary lifestyle yep. is when you have the, I mean, in Houston, you have to go out of your way to put yourself in a position to have to use your fitness. Yes. Everything, escalator, elevator, smooth, flat land, like vehicles can make it easily. If I'm going down the street, it is so much easier for me just to drive. To the coffee to, shop. Than just to walk. Yep, 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 yep. You know, even if it's a, a, a three-minute walk, I can drive in 60 seconds, so I'm going to drive. And so, and then also everybody else can do the same thing. Because even if, if I looked outside and everybody was walking. That would be different. I would be more inclined to be like, hey, I'm fit. I could walk too, you know. Um, 
And so I think that that's really exciting that people are able to look around and see others being active and that's motivating. Here you look around, you're the anomaly if you're active, yes. you know? I mean, yeah, Memorial Park is full of people on a Sunday. I get that. But like Monday through Friday, when you just look out outside, like look out my window right now, the people that are walking down the street aren't people you want to be like. They're the people that, you know, they have to walk because they don't they can't afford a car. That's really the only pedestrians you ever see yes. outside of downtown. Um, and so I think that's, that's, that's fascinating. Um, I guess maybe fascinating is the wrong word, but really cool. I think that's pretty cool. And I think Denver, as we know, I'm not really a trendy guy and I I'm anti-trend, but Denver seems like a place that I would really enjoy. So I guess I should come visit y'all at some We'll do a 14er. I have to get, I have to get a vacation. I haven't taken a vacation like three years. I don't think I've taken a vacation since I went to a California, California to do that juggernaut training seminar, which was not a vacation. It wasn't, but it fixed my snatch. <laughs> so that's all. Um, <laughs> let's shift the focus a little bit. Let's talk about kind of, uh, and, and we're, we're 40 minutes in, so 20 minutes left. Let's talk about kind of how this place has changed. Because mm. the other thing that Adriana brings to the table besides insight into Denver and life in Colorado, life away from mm. Houston, Texas, um, is the fact that you've watched this place from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and you've also gotten away from this mm -hmm. place and then visited frequently mm -hmm. to kind of see it. And so whether we want to talk about, oh, there we go, I mean, what's his name, Jax? Yes. It's like, there we go, Joel. <laughs> all right okay we're all settled good boy um i mean you've witnessed the opening of the gym yes you've witnessed joelle starting joelle mm -hmm. learning how to coach joelle becoming a very good coach i actually saw his new... interview huh? i walked by him when you were interviewing him well, outside that's... of the uh... gym it's like there he is see look at that <laughs> you saw that. You, you were teaching me how to do butterfly pull-ups Oh gosh! When I asked, when I talked to Joel about you sitting in today, that's the first thing he said. He was like, "She taught me how to do butterfly pull-ups." Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, those are really. What hard. was that? What was that interaction like? Um, I just listened because I had no idea what to <laughs> what to expect or how to do the thing. So if there's something I want to do and I want to learn how to do it, I'm gonna like be like, okay, all right. And of course, I was super controlled and mostly about it, so it wasn't fluid. Didn't flow at all, but. She was patient. She was like, you just do that, you do that. All right, you know, fix this. So she was really good with the, with the approach. Uh, very patient with me and my jabroni self at the time. <laughs> I haven't heard that word in a long time. Yeah. yeah. No, um, yeah, so for those that don't know, Adriana was a, a member for mm -hmm. a long time. She actually was a member of mine over at District H. Mm -hmm. And then when I opened Black Wolf, again, she was there day one. And then was it the summer of 2015 when you started coaching? Yeah, so I got my L1 in 2015, okay. the fall of 2015. Fall. So I, before then, I had been, like, watching you coach, right. helping out with the fitness classes, got my L1, thought I was going to meet Camille, <laughs> didn't quite get there, came back. I think it was October 2015-ish. Okay, okay. That, we were trying to figure that out yesterday. And, uh, and I mean, Adriana transitioned seamlessly into coaching. and But, I mean, to be fair, she – had the advantage of having been a teacher, teacher a great a teacher. Um, <laughs> and so she transitioned into coaching, and then she coached with us through July 4th, mm -hmm. which was the exact day Correct. that Avery took her away from us <laughs> to move her to Rock Springs, Wyoming, and then Denver, Colorado. You really had to earn that Denver, that Oof, Denver life. Yes. <laughs> she paid a heavy price <laughs> up front, and now, now she's living the dream life, so that's good. Um, but, you know, we started in a different building. We're in Lindale Park. We're in a different neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, we're over on Irvington at Woodard. If you've never been over there, it's a, it's a great neighborhood, mm -hmm. but it's a very different neighborhood. And nobody knew what CrossFit was over there. Mm -hmm. We didn't have people coming in going like, oh, I know what CrossFit. Let me join. Mike Martin uh, joined us pretty soon after we opened, and, and he was about the most familiar anybody in that neighborhood was, and he wasn't even that familiar. And and so uh, from the experiences of being over there, like, like Adriana said, we started in the opposite corner of the building than we ended up working out in mm -hmm. normally and we were we were over there as they were finishing construction and uh we kind of grew into that space and and eventually moved over here in 2016 uh february 2017 2017 
Yeah, because two years. Because I started coaching at Lindo in 2016. That's right. That's right. Twenty February 2017. So, I mean, what are the – and for both of y'all, because I'd, I'd like your insight on this too. Like, what are the biggest changes y'all think y'all have seen um, or, or any memories you have – uh, about like you know the missing palm tree they they cut the palm tree down <laughs> good old palm tree, palm tree run oh man I love that that was so fun damn palm tree run oh poor palm tree poor Eight, palm tree the what was the 800 what was the street kind of forgot the street name Mer- not Merrill um oh man I forgot what the street was I certainly don't remember for the 800 meter run I will say mayo but it's not mayo it's not mayo. <laughs> Not mayonnaise. Uh, we'll look that up. I don't yeah. remember. That's it. Today's trivia. What was the 800 meter turnaround point? What was the 800? Damn. Fulton was the mile turnaround by the Tortilla Factory. Yeah, that was Fulton. Man. You know, oh, I did not. Wow, yeah. I was not a fan of that run, yeah. that mile run. I mean, we did it mornings. like once a year. Yeah. We didn't do a lot of miles. <laughs> no, no, we didn't <laughs> do a lot of miles. miles. But when we, just because it was the smell of the tortilla. Yeah, like, it was so but strong. But like pre tortilla. Well, this yeah. was like, that's a strong smell. The tortillas were so. Pungent, so mm. that we ended up creating that loop mile run where they ended up oh, yeah. taking whatever street we can't name oh, right now, yeah, 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 yeah. and we you went to the street before Woodard. Is it Holly? No. Across across from Valero, you went down that street. Yeah. You cut yes. over. You went down five streets. Yes. Mm-hmm. To whatever street the Blairs lived on, Adam and Randy oh Blair. Gosh. And then oh, then you man. came up Irvington. Holy crud! Yeah. We did a five k one morning that loop. Three times. Three times. Man. Holy moly! That was the workout. Just throwback. Throwback, y'all. No, man. I mean, it's 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 one of those things, and, and I, we've said it with the reflection cards that they've been turning in. It's important to look back and to kind of find those things you enjoyed. Yep. Because when I'm having conversations, I had a few conversations last night at the the social. People asking me about where we were when, and I because I don't think about it. Like I don't, I'm not able to appreciate the past, and right. I think we should take the the opportunity to. Um, remember like kind of what brought us joy at different times of our lives. Mm. And when you unpack our time at Lindale, we were there a long time yeah. and a lot of great things happened there. A lot of frustrating things as well. I lived in a tent um, for a while, uh, did not have AC there and or, uh, shower. The, or shower, still don't have a shower, but at least have AC now. But you know, that tent was kind of a part of the story mm-hmm. and, and Jax and I lived and I had a mattress on the floor and, and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, but if you don't take that moment to remember and reflect, you'll forget any of that happened. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I remember the only time we ever came over to your house, I didn't even go inside. We picked you up to go and we volunteered mm-hmm. at that park or that elementary school, but I couldn't even tell you what the event that was. I have no idea. I do remember helping. What was that? We put chairs away because we were a cleanup crew. Right. But what the hell was the <laughs> event? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's time time flies. You yeah. got to take it, take the opportunity to slow down and, and remember things. And so, um, you know, whether it be doing Murph, mm-hmm. and I remember Avery duped me into doing Murph straight through one year, <laughs> where it was a hundred pull ups, and then it was two hundred push ups, and, and then it was three hundred air squats. Avery was there. When, y'all were there when I did my first Murph with, uh, at Blackwood CrossFit. Yeah, we were, we were there. Yeah, that was the first time doing it. And I was right next to Avery. I was like, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do it straight through with you. Yeah. And that was terrible. Idea. Terrible idea. Thanks, terrible. Avery. <laughs> Appreciate you, Avery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 been quite a quite a journey. We had a whopping nine parking spots, yeah. so we would park wow, yeah. all the way up Woodard, and so it's like you know when our six thirty was twenty five people, there would be cars all the, the entire down. length of the eight hundred. Um, and so pretty. Pretty interesting times back. Helmers, there. there you go. You're the winner. Who was that? That was Javier. Javier, you win a T-shirt. There you go, Javier. That's, That's what I'm talking about. Helmers. Helmers. I knew something. I was like, it wasn't Holly. Helmers. Damn it. Good job, Javier. Yeah, Javi. Javi's the winner of the trivia oh, this whoops. week. That's up doing that. There you go. I'm waving at everybody <laughs> through the screen. That's what I like to do. Damn it, I did it again. There you go. Whoops, I did it again. Britney Spears. I can't stop it's doing oops. it. I'm so I did sorry, it again, bro. Oops. Not whoops. I am s- what? It's oops. What I say? Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. Brittany doesn't say whoops. <laughs> My bad. She says oops. Oops. I hey, did Alicia. it again. You got him, man. You got him. You got him. Oh, I was just look, I was checking for comments. Oh, I don't think anybody's. I think Mila might have commented over here. I seen a gray bubble. I didn't read it. Great job. Good job, Javier. 
Thank you for that. All right, so what's uh, Joel? What's a memory from Lindell? Oh man, I think a lot of our members don't even know we were in Lindell. We have so many new members, people that were not from Lindell. We're very small over there. I think we yeah. when we moved, I think we had sixty members. Sixty, and we're about one twenty-five now. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And well, a good memory would be how we'd have like. It was a small building, yet we would still manage to have big classes to where we'd have overflow in another room where you oh, couldn't yeah, see what wow, was going yeah. on. So you needed another coach to be over there to make sure like chaos was handled. Yep. So that was that was a fun one. Uh, the rig being set up against the wall. Yep. That was that was cool. That was a fun little setup. Because all we really had, we had those power racks. Yeah. And then we used the bars to connect the power racks. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. That's where the pools were. We happening. had a, a small rig towards the end. We built that rig on the other side. Mm -hmm. The start yeah, of the yeah, rig yeah, we yeah, have yeah. now. Yeah. We had about a, I think we had a ten foot section. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a rectangle on that end over there. I think was it a rectangle? Yeah, I got a I got the idea for the power axe against the wall from Brick CrossFit New York. Brick New York. Brick not mm -hmm. yeah. Brick New York, because they are in a basement, I believe, and so they don't have space, and so they do all their squat racks against the wall, and they use those for their pull ups as all well. All the way at the end of the rig, you have the tallest uprights yep. for the tall people to do the pull ups. Because for a long time we didn't have. Oh any, my gosh, yeah. You could because on those I can yeah. reach those pull up bars by touching the ground, yeah. and so. You know, for Adriana, it's fine because you got to jump, go. jump to everything. But if you had anybody that's six feet tall or above, mm -hmm. and so at that time we had like Matt Morrison was there. Mm -hmm. We had a few mm -hmm. taller people, and they would just kind of even when Avery wasn't, it was like, "What do I do, bro?" Steven. Yeah, and so you're mm -hmm. like, "All right, we got to get the tall one." Yeah. Um, that one tall one. Yeah, I think and it's 108 the, inches. Yeah, the other tall one was the other side. That other wreck had the tall, the next tallest. The next Pull tallest, yeah. yeah. And we didn't yet have a tall, tall one like we do now. Mm -hmm. um, now there's the one where it's questionable whether you can jump up there. I kind of miss the mirrors. <laughs> there were a lot of mirrors all over that building. A <laughs> lot of spares. mirrors all over that building. Mm -hmm. The bathrooms had that yellow paint, like a pea yellow. Yeah. So while you're peeing, you looked at pee. Like it was just a weird, weird vibe there. Mm -hmm. um, you had the AC that kind of worked. Mm. Like I'd leave it on and like it would work, but like... It I didn't know it worked. It wasn't efficient. Well, there's days where you'd walk in that side, it was cold. And yeah. you're like, why is it so cold? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I tried to put, turn the AC on. Um, and then the only other thing I really remember that always stuck out to me was like the team of like vagrants that helped us out around the gym. Helped, yeah. quote, helped. Yeah. They didn't ever really do anything. They stole my lawnmower a few times. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. But um, we always had, I remember some of the coaches used to get mad at me. Because I always had someone I was giving ten bucks to to clean a window that didn't need to be yeah. cleaned or whatever, um, but we had a good little team of helpers over there, so that was mm -hmm. that was good. Uh, and in the Valero, the Valero next door, I remember being next to a gas station was interesting. You know, whether it was the trash that would blow across or, or whatever, so mm -hmm. lots of trash. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was interesting. It's very yeah. very interesting. I think that building still they they renovated it. They they fixed it. They up. painted it up, but I'm not sure they've ever leased it. Oh no! Oh, no nothing's no. in there. I was the only schmuck that would pay that much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no one. No I was one the only idiot. So it's that, still empty. That's still empty. Yeah. Last time I passed by, it was repainted, and I I looked in, and they had like, they had put another wall in, and kind of like buttoned it up a little bit more. Did they change the put big up doors. the wall you took down? No, the 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 <laughs> that's still open. <laughs> um, and but it looked like they painted everything inside, so it looks nice. But she's asking too much money. We, yeah. I was the only idiot Crazy. that was going to pay that much. And uh, so we'll see what they get in there. Good luck, lady. Good luck. Just pricing up just because it's right inside the loop. Yeah, I mean, the problem is is that it's a warehouse. And you can't do anything but warehouse stuff there. And you can't – warehouse businesses don't pay that much in rent. Yeah, random dudes would come like, hey, yeah, this used to be a boxing gym. Man. Is this guy still around? Yeah. And then, oh, wow. then there was, like, darker things going on within this boxing gym. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, no longer here. Yeah. It was uh... Just an honest fitness facility. No, for a long time we had a theory that someone had had left drugs in the wall because the party. Well, no, it wasn't the party supply company. It was the company before the party supply company that did uh, ceramics from Mexico, oh. and apparently that was the front for some sort of drug business. Now we're next to another front, and we're next to another front the now. Taco um, shop. It's just this, this, <laughs> this area of town just has some interesting businesses. But uh, apparently we people... would have people come in, especially that first year. Those guys are coming in just like. I'm sure to look around <laughs> and they would look at the walls and they would look at the ceilings. And we started to think that they must've left something. Mm. Tapping walls. And we thought they were just going to come in and just punch a hole in the wall and steal it. Like, <laughs> or take it back. But 
Um, that was very interesting. That was a very, mm. very, very interesting, uh, big interesting blue stripe? time. Big blue stripe from Wall Balls? Big blue stripe. I hope it's that, still there. That was called Clipper Ship Blue. Clipper Ship Found that at Lowe's. Nice. That was Clipper Ship Blue was that, that blue color. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll always remember that. I remember painting it, and that was yeah. fun. We'd run out of room, so we had to like put an imaginary pencil line on the other on the other side of the on the other side. I, yeah, I it was a zebra pen. Yeah. I just took like a level and I just like etched a zebra pen line across. Uh, yeah, man, man, mm. throwback, throw. And backs. now look at what we have. The rowing machines machines were on one side of the building yeah. as well, just the other yep. other end. And that's it. The so hassle to pull them through that door. Yeah, that door, that heavy <laughs> ass door that if you shut, it would slam shut. Mm -hmm. Um, man. Sometimes we would close it for fitness when fitness was going on. Because remember, we had the fitness going on on that side in front of the mirrors. Yep. So there was that. You close yep. it. Hey, you're too loud. Can you turn on your music? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. You, the coach would just walk, stick their head and be like, hey, you turn that down? <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we sure did. And then we didn't. Yeah, we, we would have to pull out the bikes every now and then to the front. That was a pain in the ass. The boxes were on the other room. Boxes on the other the room. The boxes. Yes, <laughs> against the wall. That was... <laughs> Carrying the boxes. Mm -hmm. But that door is bigger. But still, that's a yeah. hassle. But stuff is still the same. Like this workout today, yeah. very Black Wolf workout. Yeah. This entire day yeah. makes me happy. This mm -hmm. day of programming, it's like mm -hmm. this. This is why I was so fit when I went here. You're still fit. You killed it. <laughs> well, I sub you. That's what got me in here. I, I tried my free week. I was like, I got to keep this up. This is amazing. No, I think that's something that, I mean, I hope it's evolved a little bit in terms of intent. But I think the programming has stayed pretty Very. much consistent. With I am jacked up still from Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. I participated oh, both those days. Right. I am. My lats are gone still from all those damn pull-ups. The stations. Oh, yeah. That stations. was tough. That was, yeah. that was absolute murder. Make a paper pad. There you go. See you in a little bit. <laughs> yes. Evolution for sure. Essence of programming. Very consistent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Good. I'm mm -hmm. glad. Thank you. Glad. Glad you think that. For sure. And then our, our apparel game has evolved. <laughs> wow. Back then it was just a bunch of shields on the front of shirts, <laughs> which I still own and wear. And now we have we have we're a little we're a little trendier. I've had to get rid of some because I just I sunk the, I just I wore them. Out. But Joel wears them to death. I like wore Joel, them to when death. Joel wears a shirt, he's gonna he wears it a the, lot. I will wear that shirt. He he wears it literally to death. Mm -hmm. The shirt dies. Yeah, yeah. And Do you it know? smells like it dies. It smells like it's dead. Is that shirt rotting? No, that's me. I still that's, own But it's my not polo. you. Like, let's not pretend you're a stinky kid. You don't no. smell. No. It's just that you, if you put enough sweat into a shirt, even yeah. with washing it, if you put enough sweat into a shirt, no. it can't come back. It can't come back. No, no, no. Like, we need to make, we need to redo the Quad City shirt yeah. and the Be Better shirt because those I wore to death. Those are fun. You had those shirts, didn't you? I had Be Better for that's, sure. Yeah. The Quad City was a navy blue shirt. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I have a tank of that. Yep. There you go. Some some throwbacks right there. Throwback shirts. <laughs> we should bring. That's a good idea. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll be our. I, I need a. I need a t. We've been doing a lot of long sleeves. I need a t-shirt because it, it, we need something on the rack. We're in the depth of winter. But <laughs> winter just started. Houston winter, <laughs> Houston winter. <laughs> which means it's gonna be ninety and then no. thirty and then ninety and then thirty and then ninety and thirty. So they need mm -hmm. t-shirts every other day. To yeah. be fair, in terms of Denver weather, the lack of humidity m makes it so much more manageable. Yeah. So much. So what is cold like? How has the cold been for you? So, Wyoming was like the worst experience I've ever had. Oh, yeah. Like negative 25 degree days multiple Ew. times. Ew. Wow. Yeah. Had to call AAA twice Ew. in my driveway. Oh, nice. Because they got stuck in my driveway. Shovel snow? Much? They shoveled. <laughs> I don't know how to. They shoveled it out for me. But Denver is so mild. The mountains block the majority of the snow, okay. so they get the majority of the snow. Mm -hmm. And when it snows, mm -hmm. it'll snow for a day. Yeah. But then the sun comes out, and it melts. Interesting. And the just like the sheer amount of traffic makes the roads fine. Huh. Look and like tracks. 50 degrees here. Yeah. Feels like 25 degrees there Is because that, of humidity. The humidity. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So. Huh. It's good to know. Very Just manageable. Hang out in Denver. Hi, handsome. You back? He's back. Hi, pumpkin. Pumpkin. What a sweet, sweet boy. Very much the center of attention. Well, good. I mean, that's a good look back kind of on our, our Lindale days. And, uh, mm -hmm. what, what, going in? Okay, cool. The past four years. 
Four years and counting. Four years, four years and counting. And counting. Mm-hmm. Four years and counting. Yeah. Are you get? What are you doing, man? He's, he's kind of halfway in, halfway out. <laughs> Not really committed to anything. He just lets it, lets it go. See where the universe takes him. Does he shed? Yes. His hair is everywhere. Yeah. That's why I ran the vacuum before we all sat down because I'm embarrassed about how messy it is in here. There was this one time where I went to the restroom and I was like, Jesus, Ben. I was like, oh, that's Jax. <laughs> his hair is all over the toilet. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. That's got to be just Jax. Yeah, what Jax. was he doing? Just drinking the water? Yeah, that's his water bowl. That's his water bowl. Ben. Sometimes you have to, I'll oh, shut the door and like, no Jax. go. Jax. That toilet bowl water is really clean. He, no, he, he, I, and let's, let's be clear. I give him water bowls and yeah. he doesn't drink the water. <laughs> he goes in the bathroom. Something about ceramics. So. His choice. That porcelain. Jax, we can, we can change that. that how, how's that, is that, is that not a water bowl for dogs? A little mini toilet? It should be. It should like be. an actual porcelain. We're thing. gonna pan that. We're gonna make it. There That's you go. It. You don't fit, bro. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at this weirdo. Look at this weirdo. Is that David? That's David opening up the door. What? Should I help him? He's doing it. It looks like he's. Let him go, bro. Empowered. Okay, okay cool. But let's wrap this up because we just crossed an hour. So. Yeah. Instagram just went off. Yeah. So uh, again, announcements next week. Regular schedule except for Tuesday, 8 a.m. and 9:30 a.m. We're taking on Chad. Taking on Chad. Thousand step ups for time. Okay. Bingo will be released January 1st. We'll post up a rough draft. What I did not mention in the beginning, your reflection cards. A lot of y'all been doing it. Um, they're at the front desk. So writing down a few reflections from the past year, a couple of years, what what's changed for you since you joined Black Wolf, and then what do you want to work on in the new year? What are some goals for you to take on in 2019? And we're not going to like throw these out unless you do not mind. This is mainly for you. If, if we see you. anything we want to share, we will take, we will ask you first. So mm-hmm. please write down like with your – your whole heart, what yeah. you really intend, and, and that can way, keep it anonymous. Um, yeah, we can absolutely keep it anonymous. So, um, and if you haven't seen Adriana, they leave Sunday. Yeah, come to the eight a.m. tomorrow. Eight a.m. tomorrow. Come say hi to her and Avery. Is Avery gonna get up that early? Uh, we'll see. We'll see yeah. if Avery gets up She's, that early, but I'll definitely, definitely come see Adriana. And uh, I think that's uh, that's about it. That should be anything else. Oh my gosh, I'm honored. Thanks, y'all. Honored. This is. The final Black Wolf Untitled Podcast of 2018, oh, by the yeah. way, isn't it? That's all, I mean, Holy moly. Whatever. We'll <laughs> see you next year. Tune in next year for episode 35. There we go. I certainly thought you Bye, were folks. about to do an outro song. Um, <laughs> really? Should he sing? I don't know what to sing. Silver bells. <laughs> all right, we're ending there. Okay, Please bye. One and we're out. Oh.